Hello, everyone. We are so glad that you took a few minutes today to join us. In just a few minutes, we're just going to lead in. And I feel very strongly. First of all, let me just tell you, I'm Pastor Howard Jones at the River. And with me today, joining me in this hour of prayer, is Pastor Lisa Piper, who is over our Freedom Ministries, our Deliverance Ministries. So I want to encourage you today, what we're going to be doing is taking prayer requests. There's a couple of ways to do that. You can do it in the comments at the bottom. And then uh, not only that, there's a phone number at the top you can call and or text. And we have behind us in the sanctuary here at the river some prayer folks. As you send in your request or post your request, they will begin immediately praying for you with us. So we're very excited about that and glad you've joined us. And uh, so this is live right now on, uh, on three, uh, 3 o'clock Tuesday. And so we're just going to lead in. Just, Lisa, I'm glad you're joining me today for this hour of prayer. I'm so glad to be here. I'm excited Lisa's here. She's uh, one of the most praying people I know. And uh, so we're expecting God to do miracles in your life today. You know, in our world, in our society, our church is not as relevant in, as it was in one time frame here in America. They're not, we're not taken serious at times, and very few people see value in church like they used to. But I believe in a time like this, we need to understand that the church is not just a logical meeting. It's not just a coming together in a social club. But we in the river and many other churches throughout Hopkins County believe that God has blessed us with his Holy Spirit and with power to do what social clubs cannot do. And so we come to you today with all the confidence and boldness and the backing of the word of God that our God answers prayer. And so, Lisa, have you got anything you want to share before we just dive in here? Well, I would like to share um, just what's been on your heart from this perspective is that um, I, I think on a lot of pastors it's really heavy right now knowing how to take care of the sheep, knowing what to do with your church, and knowing that there are people that are fearful. And uh, sometimes if you act like you're not fearful, people wonder why you're not afraid. Uh, being cautious and fearful, two different things. Two different things. <laughs> And um, we've just encountered some people who are terrified. Yes. And um, I know that when, when you came in this morning, you'd encounter someone who had been very afraid and your heart went out to them. And since we know the temperature of the culture right now is not knowing how to pray, not knowing how to trust God, if to trust God, yeah. um, and, and being just fearful, we wanted to bring a voice of peace and of hope today. Yeah. That's exactly what God has laid on my heart as we, we talk a few minutes and then we're going to, we may do some praying, but we mainly want you to know if you get your prayer request to us during this live broadcast, there are people in the room who will pray for you by name or by situation, ever how you want to do it. You can be public with your prayer request in the notes below or in the comments below, or you can reach out to us through a phone number that is listed at the top of this program or every how they're doing it. We didn't have time. We didn't plan this very well. But it's like Lisa said, I had several encounters with people today that were fearful that all the changes that have taken place in our world has them out of place, out of socket. My heart goes out to every waitress and waiter in, in, in the state of Kentucky, that overnight their jobs have went away and we're thankful that our government is going to try to help us and send some money out, uh, I understand. But we know right now that whatever's brought us to this condition, whatever's brought us to this state, that America, number one, has never been here before, and number two, it will never be completely the same again. So we feel very important to share with you the very backbone of Christianity that prayer, God answers prayer. And as she said, the word hope, hope is my best friend. 
I've been shot at on the mission field. I fought cancer for two years, and I could go on with that, but it's not, none of that's relevant right now. But when my faith was weak, when I didn't know what to do or where to turn, the hope, the Bible calls it the blessed hope. Paul called it the anchor of hope. And Proverbs said, though, in Proverbs 13, it says hope deferred makes the heart sick. So I feel, Lisa, right now a lot of people, possibly church folks, but especially those who don't know the Lord, that it's easy to be an atheist when everything is going well, but when things are not, I believe there's people all over this county, no matter what your walk of life is, is have to reconsider two things. What's life about and how in the world are we going to get through this? I want to tell you, Jesus is our hope. And he said, my peace I leave with you. He's not taking it. And also he said that he gives us peace that passes understanding. And in these times, it should be that people of faith have peace that passes the understanding. When, when uh, people look at uh, those with the Christian faith, we really do have the answer to peace. Because we, Jesus left that with us. He sent us a comforter who comforts. And I don't know about you, but there's a lot of uh, people that need comfort right now. And so when we reach out to Holy Spirit, he will fill us with that. We don't have to be terrified. Amen. The reality is, is very simple. I know that many of us physically, and in, in the comments I see constantly, are looking only on the outside. And everybody I know during the beginning of this first uh, pandemic like this was doing self-examination. They were checking their temperature. They're washing their hands. They are distancing, social distancing. It, or whatever it is, getting away from each other is the main thing we're trying to do to protect us. That came from evaluation of your own health. If you felt healthy, you sure didn't want to be around anybody that wasn't. Nothing wrong with any of that. But on my side, from the beginning of this, when I knew that our nation was in trouble, I knew also people will be doing spiritual examination. If you're not, you're not even human. Because there's a time to reflect. Did God do this? Did the devil do this? Is this happen chance? Are we, we in a society where, where we are no longer relevant? That whatever you was worried about two weeks ago, whether you was going to make it to March Madness or whatnot, all that went away. All the, none of that matters. There's two things on the mind of most people I've run into during this crisis is basically their health and where is God at in all of this? I think that's right. And, um, you know, being in freedom ministry, I don't like to over mention the enemy, but I will say the enemy does not play fair. For some reason, we have this mindset that he eases up when bad things happen, but he's not like that. He's a strategist, an insane strategist who comes in, <clears throat> picks on children, picks on kids. And I think even some of the most solid people, when they're looking at this situation, um, and, and people are beginning to vibrate with anxiety, and it's, it's, the anxiety is spreading faster than any virus possibly could spread. And I think that we have to remember that we do have an enemy, and then the Bible is explicit that fear is not of God. Fear is a spirit. God's not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And I think that when we know it's an enemy, that we're more apt to stand up and not take that. Whereas if you just think it's a, it's a normal process, it's something that you're going through, you may just go through it and take it. But if you wise up and go, wait a minute, what I'm feeling is anxiety. The Lord says that he takes care of even the birds. He takes care of even the flowers. How much more so would he not take care of me? And we need to choose to believe he is who he said he, he is. And sure, we could get fearful pretty quickly about our provision, our provision for our family. But if we get our eyes on that, on that fear, it will drain out our hope. And then anxiety comes in and we don't know what to do. And soon we're not trusting God and uh, we're going berserk with the world. And we, don't, we need to be a stabilizer for the world. I believe that with all of my heart. 
See, it, it's very hard to explain why I do what I do. But by the grace of God, I see this world completely different than most folks. I believe we are eternal beings. I believe we're here on earth to enjoy life, to serve God, and to get ready for eternity. So when you go through stuff like this, I think fear is one of the first enemies that raises up. Mm -hmm. Right now in your life, there are people sitting at home not only to be safe, but fear has gripped your heart. You don't know what to do. You know what everybody's telling you to do. Everybody has an opinion on what someone else ought to do. But very seldom do we figure out what we need to do. I want you to know if fear is knocking on your heart's door, if you already are sitting down trying to figure out how you're going to financially make it through the next two weeks or two months, whatever this is, or how you're going to get from A to B or whatever's going on, I want to assure you there is an answer not only from our government that's doing everything they can, but there is a government that will have no end. And the king of that government is Jesus Christ. And he's alive and well on planet earth. And his anointing is on my life right now. What you're feeling is not an emotion. The God of the creation is knocking on some heart's doors. Amen. How, how can you tell? If you were somebody were to say, how can I tell that God's knocking on my heart's door? What's that feel like? What's that look like? It would feel kind of like hope is beginning to come in and let you know that though it looks dark, there's nothing brighter in the middle of darkness than a light. Mm -hmm. The Bible says Jesus is the light of the world. I believe over these next few minutes, I don't even know how long we've been here yet, but I trust you're sending in prayer requests. I know our team is already praying for all the viewers that are watching this or going to watch this. But Jesus is the light of the world, and hope is knocking on your door. All you got to do is open up and allow the very presence of God. See, I've been a pastor. I've not really ever been a very good preacher or eloquent preacher. I'm not a book writer or a poem writer or reader. But I met God. He met me right where I was. I was a mess. He came into my life. He encountered me on such a level that it's been easy, Lisa, to trust him ever since the day that I met him. Not that there wasn't days of doubt, but P uh, David said it like this. He said, what time I am afraid, I will trust him. Amen. I'm telling you, looking at guys, I have been through enough to know God is enough, not only for me, but for every one of you watching this program right now. I, the realization do you understand God loves every one of y'all just as much as he loves me and your pastor, your neighbors? And so, therefore, with the kind of love that God has for us, it was shed and, and revealed to us before we were Christians. So right now, even if you don't know God, even if you don't believe in God, I believe that we are in a time in America when we got to get past just trying to have church Amen. or come together for social reasons at our church, I believe God of miracles is wanting to show up in our lives because we have exhausted all of our natural resources. We have exhausted and, 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 and know that our government is scrambling to know what to do next. And they're giving us a day-by-day -day play they're doing that because they don't know what tomorrow holds. No one does. But I know for anyone who will stretch themselves out of their narrow way of viewing life that has kept you away from the King of Kings, I encourage you to embrace him. I think there's some decisions that need to be made. One of the stories you tell, Pastor Jones, is about when you were laying on the ground with the bullets flying over you in Haiti, believing that that was your last breath. I mean, what we're doing right now is not nearly compared to that with the soldiers' boots stomping all around you. 
And you had to make a decision right there. And you tell about, okay, God, I know that I'm going to trust you to take care of my wife. I'm going to trust you to take care of my daughter. I know that I'm about to see you. You had no reason to believe you would survive or get out of the country when the coup happened there in Haiti. And then when you had cancer, you talk about there came a time that you had to make a decision whether you were going to trust God or not. And I believe that there's some people that you just need to make a decision. Can you trust God or not? Make a decision. Do you want to find out who he is or not? Is this the thing that's going to take you out or not? Is this the time that you get in or you get fearful? And once you make that decision, hopefully the good one, make the decision to trust God, you raise up and you attach your faith to that declaration. And our gospel, the gospel of Jesus is a gospel of power. It is not powerless like the world and Hollywood likes to lend it to, but it's full of power. The only thing you need is to make a decision and attach your faith to that decision and then watch God move. I don't know what he'll do, but I know 100%. He is faithful. That's who he is. He can't help but be faithful. Amen. Because God is present on this planet through us. Mm -hmm. I, I feel very confident, and even when this began, that God was going to do some miracles for folks. And I come to you right now, and, and, and I believe that what we need to do in this very moment is, is pray for you who are watching. Here's what I want you to do right now. I'm confident this is going to happen to anyone that will pray this prayer. Just say this. Say, Lord, reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. Okay. Now watch this. Holy Spirit, I'm going to pray for you right now. If you prayed that and meant that, don't be surprised if a tear don't run out of your eye. Don't be surprised that your heart starts beating faster. Because I'm telling you, I'm not talking about a myth. I'm not talking about a religion. I'm talking about the King of kings and the Lord of lords, yes. the one who stepped out on nothing Amen. and spoke all this into existence. And I believe right now I'm going to pray. And wherever you're at right now, and I, I, I'm just going to pray, and I believe Holy Spirit wants to wrap his big arms of love around you right where you are. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for your love. Thank yes. you for your grace. Thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to be in us and among us. God, there's a lonely mother sitting there right now not knowing what to do. She I, maybe be even a, a waitress that, that is now looking at, at her kids and like, what am I going to do now? Lord, I, I ask you right now for a dad who who understands that his money is changing and his finances are changing and he hadn't even told his wife yet and he's concerned about what is next. Lord, I pray for anyone with physical conditions, Lord God, that is contrary to their existence. Lord, you said abundant life, but they're having everything but abundant life. I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, to make yourself known to make yourself known to any hungry heart watching this program mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. Reveal yourselves. Yeah. Speak to their hearts right now in Jesus' name. If, if Holy Spirit is knocking on your heart's door, if you feel the warmth of his presence or you feel very emotional and tears are running down your eyes, I want you to know that's not just emotion. It is the power of the Holy Spirit encouraging you and letting you know that God is alive and well. What you do with that at this moment is up to you. I would encourage you, if you don't know him as your personal Savior, to ask him into your heart. And if you already have him in your heart and your flesh and your nerves and your anxiety is giving you a lot of trouble, why don't you just take a moment and ask the Lord to take that away from you. Or you can use that number. You can text or call or put it in the comments down below. Let us know about Holy Spirit showing up right where you are. We love you guys. 
and we're believing God for great things, and we encourage you at this point. Most of these people that are here praying for you right now, the reason they're here praying for you is they once sat where you sat. They once were where you are. You take any scenario, it's setting behind me right now. And the reason they're here praying, because ain't nobody got compassion for you guys like these guys who come in on an afternoon and spread themselves out over a huge sanctuary and intercede in your behalf. God is the answer. Jesus is the hope of the world. And not only that, he's my hope, and I assure you, he is your hope. Lisa? I want to add that uh, there's a link on, our, on the Facebook page to the river, but you can look at two, it's the number two, theriver.com forward slash I think it's pray it, say it. If not, it's say it, pray it. But I believe it's pray it, say it. And Pastor Jones has um, recorded some ways to pray the scripture. And I'm just going to, if you don't care, I just want to read like four verses out of read Psalm 91. Read, read all of it you want to. Because read. you may not know how to pray. Yeah. Or how to declare or what maybe you can't sleep or maybe you're worried. So not only when do we stand up to fear and command fear to go, but we also make declarations of who we are and who God is. So Psalm 91, this happens to be the voice version here, um, reads this. He who takes refuge in the shelter of the Most High will be safe in the shadow of the Almighty. He will say to the Eternal, my shelter, my mighty fortress, my God, I place all my trust in you. For he will rescue you from the snares set by your enemies who entrap you and from deadly plagues. Like a bird protecting its young, God will cover you with his feathers, will protect you under his great wings. His faithfulness will form a shield around you, a rock-solid wall to protect you. And those may seem like words, but if you match your faith to trust in God while you are saying those, it will produce life in your life. And listen, as a mama, my kids are grown. I've got little grand, beautiful granddaughters, but our kids need to hear us declaring the word. And that doesn't mean that we're saying that nothing's happening. It doesn't mean that we're not washing our hands. It doesn't mean we're not denying that there's things going on. But what we are saying is that we have a hope. We have a protector. We have a provider. And, um, Fear is in the children. The children, if you, can you imagine all the adults we have encountered with fear? The children are laden with fear, and they weren't um, made. I mean, you know, the boogeyman scares a child. Can you imagine if they believe impending whatever is happening? So they need to know this word. They need to hear their parents declaring it, and they need to hear good things. And one other thing is um, I think you were talking, and maybe in the pulpit Sunday morning, about a little humor. Right. I've seen some people, you know, America is funny. There are just some funny people in America. There's some yeah. funny memes out there. And somebody was upset that anyone would laugh. But the thing is, laughter does the heart good like a medicine. Amen. And why not be able to be at such peace that you can snicker at, you know, something that is humorous or allow the Lord to bubble up joy because when you have peace that passes understanding, you also have joy that's unspeakable and full of glory Amen. and can pop up in times like this. Amen. That's a good word right there, Lisa. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I take Psalm 91 to heart. It, it, uh, uh, it was called by the old timers, uh, Christian insurance. And, uh, but, but what happened to me, I, I became a grandfather, uh, almost three years ago, and I adapted uh, the Psalm 91. Personally, for me, my grandson is named Gus, and, and I, anywhere it was talking about the, whoever is praying this prayer, I put his name in it. Mm -hmm. So I'm all, you know, I, read, I, I did this every day for two years, and now I do it every, as I feel like it, but I did this thing where I would just say, uh, the, the, the Lord is Gus's refuge. And, you know, on and on like that. But I also did one for family, what she was referring to earlier. I pray for my family from Psalm 91. And what I did, I just took scriptures and put my family in the midst of that. And so if you go to there, I, 
I'm glad you brought that up, Lisa, because it's not only just reading scriptures or praying scriptures, but it has a personal spin on it. The reason I do that, because our God is a personal God. Yeah. He's a personal God. He said, you know, for us to pray our Father, which means me too. He's my Father. He's my Dad. And so I appreciate that. But also about humor, because we get pretty intense in hours like this, and truly there's nothing to laugh at. But here's what we know. We will get through this. I believe this uh, 2020 will forever be remembered as the season when there was a shift in the way people do life. I think it's a good time for you uh, and I to survey every aspect of our lives. But right now, what you're going through is the most important part. A lot of times we lose sight. That's, that's the reason some people get excited that church is having church and other people are very disappointed and afraid that we're spreading the virus. And, but I encourage any church to follow the guidelines of the CDC as if you're doing any gatherings. But at the same time, uh, you need to take a moment, pull your head out of the disaster and smile and allow the joy, whatever makes you happy there. That's very important. But again, Lisa, we want to go back to the very fact of hope. There is hope. Mm -hmm. This too shall pass. I, I hear terms all the time like it's going to get worse before it gets better. I hear uh, people saying, you know, everything from, uh, well, it's non nonsense what people are saying. It don't matter until you hear it from our government. But I'm saying all that. Wherever you are in life, fired up Christian or a disappointed Christian, a church hurt Christian, a lukewarm Christian, an atheist, someone agnostic, you don't know if he's real or not, this is your time. If you are ever going to have a moment to start figuring out your spot in life, it's a good season to do that. Again, we encourage you to get a hold of us through the comments at the bottom of this video. Uh, call in whatever you feel like doing, but let us join our faith with your. There's not a person in this room praying that hasn't had God answer prayer. Therefore, when they read your request, they already know God is well able and willing to move in your behalf. God is a good provider. Amen. I don't know how he does it, but we, when you ask, if you were to say, well, Lisa, how do you know God's going to provide? I know too much about him now that this is not going to stop my faith at what I know. You know, we see miracle, miracles regularly here, and I'm thinking of one about a family that before this even all started, um, the man was no longer working, and they had a real need, and God kept providing, kept providing, and then on the way to church the other day, they had, um, the wife had an item that she desperately needed. She was getting frustrated, and she was like, you know, I just don't know if I can do this or not, and so the husband's getting a little frustrated, and the secret to marriage is, is uniting during stress. Instead of picking a fight with one another, uniting and trusting God, and um, so he just began to pray. When they walked into the church, and they have a special place that they like to sit. We don't have assigned seats here, so if somebody wanted to come here, you can sit anywhere you want. But they have a place they usually sit. And when they got to the seat, don't you know, without telling anybody, that very item that was needed was sitting in the seat. Amen. Isn't that amazing? God is faithful. I've had times I haven't had food. That's how I don't have a problem trusting God is because I've already been through a lot of it. We did not have food and begin to pray, and God supernaturally provide. But you know what I think about is the four Hebrew, is it the three Hebrews? Children. <laughs> three. <laughs> three, and it was yes. four in the fire. Yes. They said, we will not bow down. Our right. God is able to deliver, but if he doesn't, I'm still not going to bow down. And it so right. I'm willing to say this on Facebook. I yeah. am not willing to bow down to fear. I'm not willing to bow down to compromise. Our God will deliver us. But if it were to happen, I go to glory. And what I think will happen, does it? 
still not going to bow down. He's still able to meet me in the fire, just like he did with those Hebrew children. And if we're going to have to live, why not live with joy and with peace and loving people and helping to take care of who, whoever we can during this process? Amen. Amen. Lisa, I, I think uh, we're probably going to do a little praying right now, but if, if you will look up on the screens here, there's some of the prayer requests that are coming in, and uh, I appreciate I appreciate you guys responding and letting us know. And uh, with that said, uh, before we do that, uh, do you know the song, Consider the Lilies? I do know that. She's afraid to answer that because she knows what's next. Your wife usually sings that. She usually does. <laughs> she's Can you do here. a little bit of that right now or all of it? I feel like somebody right now needs to know. Does, you've been asking yourself, does God consider me? Is he thinking about me? He considers even the lilies. Come on. And I'm going to consider you so much, I may not know this. I'm going to try it anyway. <laughs> Just try that. Consider the lilies. They don't toil nor spin. Yet there's not a king with more splendor than them. Consider the sparrow. They don't toil nor spin, but they're fed by the master who watches them grow. We have a heavenly Father above with eyes full of mercy and a heart full of love. He really cares when your head is bowed low. Consider the lilies and then you will know. May I introduce you to this friend of mine who hangs out the stars Tells the sun when to shine and kisses the lilies each morning with dew. But he's not too busy to care about you. We have a heavenly Father above with eyes full of mercy and a heart full of love. He really cares when your head is bowed low. Consider the lilies and then you will know. Hallelujah. See what I'm talking about? How God show right up where you are. Put his arms of love around you. I want to speak quickly, not quickly. I got all the time you have. Hallelujah. But the Lord wants to touch you. I, I believe there's some folks, Lisa, I, I, I know people don't like to use this term, that have gotten away from God. And some churches use the term backslid. And, and your mama used to sing that song. And you need to know it ain't too late. It ain't too late. And, and we want you to know part of that song. So let me introduce you to a friend. <laughs> just let me introduce you right now if you're watching and you don't even believe in God but something's got your attention enough right now 
you are wondering whether he exists, I can show you he does. All you got to do is let me introduce you to him. He's alive. He's well. And he will love on you and make himself real to you. Oh, yeah, we're in troubled and trying times, but he'll be right there with us every step of the way. Can I pray for you right now? Hallelujah. Lord, I, I know there was people touched by that song right then. God, I, I feel like even uh, someone from our congregation, Lord, that, that was going through a tough time that had joined us, and, and, Lord, they just needed to hear that. They need to be reminded that you know the very hairs of our head. Yes. You know our down setting and our uprising. You know our going out and our coming in, and you love us anyway. Even the one that cursed you and wanted to die, you love them just as much as you love me. Lord, I'm asking to make yourself real. Make yourself real. Make yourself real to every person, wherever they're at in their walk with you. Just make yourself real. Encourage the pastor. God, if there's any pastors watching, Lord, here's what I know. Every one of us have no clue what to do. We found ourselves in the situation we find ourselves in very often that no matter what we do, Facebook is going to criticize it. We have no option. Not whatever we do, people will judge our motives wrongly. And so for those pastors right now that don't know what to do, and, and I'm asking you for a revelation to show them. Show them right now. And, Lord, for the person that don't even believe in you and you're knocking on their heart's door, sir, all you got to do, ma'am, all you got to do is, is say, Dear Jesus, come into my heart. Change my life. And, Lord, for the one that's run backwards and used to enjoy hearing the song, Consider the Lilies, and they hadn't heard it in years, but they heard it today because you love them that much. God, I trust you to do that. Renew your relationship with them as they ask you to do that, as they tell you that they're sorry. Just You need to tell the Lord you're sorry that you walked away from him, but he's right where you left him. Hallelujah. And so just do that right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And Pastor, I feel like there's a mother, and I think you have three children, and you're wondering how you're going to feed them. And this is an opportune time to gather those babies up, I don't know how old they are, and show them how to trust in God. So get in a little circle and just say, Father, uh, we trust in you, and we're believing you for whatever. And then when the Lord provides, it'll be a testimony. You can say, see, kids, how we prayed. And here's what God provided, and it's a teaching lesson. But I feel like you feel justified in worrying because you feel like you're taking care of your kids. Uh, but you need to know that worry is not for you. <laughs> and that take the time that you're spending in prayer, even just looking at those. When you look at your kids, you worry. Don't do that. Just say, God, I'm trying to worry, but I'm just going to trust in you. I'm just going to pray, and I'm just going to believe you're going to provide and train your kids that way. But the Lord sees you worrying. and. He doesn't want you to do that. He is going to provide. Amen. Would you just pray for that mother right now? Well, I pray for every mother that's watching that has concerns about their children, how to take care of them, how to provide, how to keep them safe, uh, for caregivers to school. And, Lord, I ask that you increase their faith and cause mustard seed faith to rise up and match your word and activate your word. I ask you to give these parents wisdom in, with their children, what to do with them, where to go. And God, I believe that you could even show them if there's a place that's dangerous, that you will put a check in their spirit, that they will just know not to go there. But if it's a place is safe, that your peace will fall upon them. That one that's concerned about child care so that they can provide. God, I ask you for good caregivers. I ask you for wisdom and provision to come into those situations. I thank you for doing that, God. I really do care about you, mamas. I really do care. And uh, just because I'm wearing a smile on my face doesn't mean I don't care about the, what you're going through. 
And even though we are people of faith, that doesn't mean that some of this won't be difficult. I know that there's been a couple of times when I have been sitting at my desk and suddenly that pressure of the fear come or wondering about what this is going to look like in a little bit, but I just can't go there. And as mothers, as fathers, we can't go there. One thing, we're leading our children. We're showing them how to act in the middle of diversity. What a training opportunity to do that and to show them who our God is really is. He really is faithful. Read Psalm 91 over and over again until you believe it. Uh, I have one other thing. I got a, a word of knowledge that I don't know if they would still be on here, but while we were talking, I felt like somebody was mocking us. And I would just like to say, um, you can mock all you want, but in the middle of your adversity, I pray that you remember that God is faithful. And he is sweet, and he is good. And I don't have any hard feelings toward anybody that would mock, and so I would forgive you of that, but I would just want to tell you, I, what, is, what is it that's making you mock the truth? Is it that you are bitter? It is that you were rejected? Is it that you were hurt in church? Is that you've tried God and he didn't work? I'll, but ask the Lord. You know, I, I'm not fearful to tell you, just get real and ask God. Why didn't this happen? Or who are you? And introduce yourself to me. Just get real with him. And he is the God who does respond. And then I know that God in one moment can, walk a, can wipe a smile of mockery off your face and put a real deep-rooted joy inside of you. See, I'm not the one sitting here miserable, so I'm not know, and know why anybody would mock, but <laughs> only a miserable person would do that. But you can come right out of your misery, and it doesn't take penance, and it doesn't take giving the church a thousand dollars. It doesn't take um, walking backwards. All it takes is what pastor said, is confessing to the Lord, talking with him, putting your faith with that, and he will come in and this is a season where he's going to show himself alive. I'm, I'm very excited for that word there, Lisa. It's very important. And, and I, I want to, if, if someone is mocking or all the posts that are anti what we do, I want you to know we love you. I, you know, I didn't know that. Nobody told me when I started pastoring that this was part of the job. It's one of the benefits. You learn how to, to grow up quick. Because I've been mocked for 33 years. Well, Jesus was mocked, so we can expect it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I try to remember um, when that happens. And uh, so I I'm sorry for anyone that feels that uh, you must say something negative about any church or any pastor. Can I tell you something about your pastor? He gave up every dream, every thought, every idea that he had when he was a teenager and growing up to be your pastor. You might ought to honor him a little bit, respect him, even if he don't make decisions that you appreciate. And I'm not saying that on my behalf because I know there's other preachers, they had not been in it as long as I have, and, and what people say to them kind of wounds a little deeper than it does me. I'm just like, huh, it's another day pastoring. And... Uh, and anyway, I got a story about that. But there's no rebu rebuke or reproof from me. And say what you want. I'm not going to change anything I do. So I don't know why you do it. <laughs> but I love you. Can I, I love you. I just, can I do one more scripture? <laughs> if, if, if somebody doesn't like it, we need to give them a reason not to. <laughs> a reason to. Listen, we've got people that have serious issues that have messaged in. People in the hospital that they don't know what their outcome is going to be. There are people um, needing provision. They want to pray for doctors, nurses, healthcare workers. Um, in Honduras, where my parents are missionaries, the, uh, as they say, the electric went off and the borders are closed. My parents were supposed to come back to the States actually Thursday. And I won't be go getting them, but my joy is still not going to be robbed because Amen. God can protect somebody in Honduras just as well Amen. as he can in the States. Did you have something to say before no, I read no, that no, scripture? I'm, I'm... Okay. And uh, somebody's daughter and grandchildren, uh, finances, uh, Hopkins County school children, government leaders and president. But we have a scripture that we can stand on for our God 
who still saves, heals, delivers, sets free, makes people whole. I love this scripture, and you'll find it in Luke 4, 18, where Jesus walks into the temple, and he picks up the scrolls, and he reads Isaiah 61, and he says, I'm here to fulfill this. This is what Jesus came to do, and he never changed his mind. <clears throat> the Spirit of the Lord, the Eternal One, is upon me. Why? Because the Eternal designated me to be his representative to the poor. Is that you right now? To the poor, to preach good news to them. He sent me to tell those who are held captive that they can now be set free, to tell the blind they can now see. He sent me to liberate those held down by oppression. In short, the Spirit is upon me to proclaim that now is the time. This is the jubilee season of the Eternal One's grace. I love that in the King James Version. For some reason, I had this here in the voice. But everyone who is called in, everyone who's messaged in, Jesus came yeah. to heal, to deliver, yes. to set free, to, to heal the broken, and to save. He came to do um, a whole work inside of us. So it's the confidence of Luke 418 that we will pray right now for um, those prayer requests. I know that the guys back here are praying, but in the name of Jesus, yeah. Father, I thank you that you are the God who came, stepped up in that temple and declared that you came to fulfill this. And there are evidence in the word that even after Jesus uh, resurrected, there were still miracles. There were people still being set free. So it's by the power of Jesus who came in the flesh, born of a virgin, crucified and rose the third day and sits at the right hand of the Father, ever making intercession for us. It's by that name that we ask you right now to heal those that are sick, to set free those that are in bondage. We ask you to give wisdom to our government. We ask you to give wisdom to our leaders, to protect the, the police officers, the ambulance workers, all of the civil service people. God, we ask you to go into those homes and provide food and provision. We ask you, God, to do what only you can do in Kentucky. Do what only you can do in the United States and around the world and in Honduras. God, we are desperate. We are desperate for your move. We are desperate to know who you are and the power of who you are. You are a miracle-working God, and I will not remain silent. You are a miracle-working God. I have seen you heal. I have seen you set the captive free. I have seen you do mighty work, so God, and I have no reason to believe you are stopping now, but in this season that it is only providing an opportunity to see you do greater works, and I thank you for that. And all of the prayers that have been prayed for these prayer requests, I say yes and amen. Thank you, God, for showing yourself alive. Thank you, God, for touching everyone who's viewing this. And I thank you for Pastor Jones, for giving him wisdom, God, for giving him discernment, and that he hears your voice louder than ever before. For he and Pastor Joey, and God bless them. And all of the pastors, Lord, that are, yes. that are working, all of the pastors with your heart, God, that they would hear your voice and that they would unite and say just what you say. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Lisa. I, I, again, as you know, and you may not feel this at home, but I felt all through the prayer, all through this uh, gathering right now, I know we'll shift out of it in a few moments, but I want to remind you, the Spirit of the Lord is not limited to the laws of the land. And I'm not saying that for me. I'm talking about... God can show up there right where you are. He don't have the laws of gravity not holding back. He could be right there with you right now. All you need to do is ask him. And Lisa, just a few moments ago, uh, you mentioned that I had a battle with cancer. And I know all about immune systems and challenges. But I really we're going to take a moment and pray for anyone that is watching that your immune system is not functioning properly. And, and I know what the doctors told you, you know, that the people that love us, they want to keep us safe and, and keep us uh, away from viruses and thank God for them who do that. But we know what the doctor said. You know, uh, when, I, when I came out of the hospital after many, many days of treatment, uh, they didn't want me to do nothing. And I understand that. And, but my point simply is this. There's another level of fear 
when it's not only the enemy of a virus that may attack you, but it can attack you to the level that it can threaten your life. But not only that, what somehow some people don't realize, if you are going through uh, treatments per se or anything that's knocked out your immune system long before this particular virus come along, um, it was when I went through it, and they threatened me with the needs of a life, told me all kind of things that's already here before this virus got here that could take our lives. So the point being, I want to pray for you if you're if fear's gone to a new level, if you can't if you can't function in life because your immune system. There's two things I want to tell you. One, God wants to give you hope even in the midst of this moment when nobody else knows what you're going through unless you're the one that doesn't have an immune system. But also God's well able to fix that. And I, I know y'all been listening to us up now, but now we're getting into miraculous and you don't know about all that. I can assure you, he's a miracle working God. Yes. And I want to pray for you, not from the point of view of what everybody else is doing. I want to do it because I have been where you are, okay? Father, every person, no matter what it is, God, from diseases to cancer to whatever it is, I pray for those whose body is not fighting like everybody else's is. Lord, but I pray peace, first of all, peace, boldness, mm -hmm. and a confidence. Yes. God, life is not life at all in a prison. And so when fear grips our heart, it becomes a prison. God, I want you to, I'm asking you right now for every person that watching this or may watch this that has an immune system that's not working properly, that your miracle working power touch them and protect them. Yeah. Protect them. Protect them. And Lord, thank you for caregivers around those who watch over them and try to do their part to keep them safe. But God, I know you can meet them uh, where our caretakers run out of energy. Thank you, Father, for touching every person. Lord, even those with uh, other diseases and HIV or AIDS, whatever anyone is going through out there that has messed with their system, God, help them. Mm -hmm. Reveal your love Thank to you, them. Lord. Set them free in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I think we need to make sure and just be mindful of those people. I accidentally hugged somebody the other day. <laughs> and, Oops. <laughs> and I'm not even a huggy person. I guess it's with them saying, don't hug. I'm like, I'm all up in the <laughs> hugging. But <clears throat> uh, I just think that just because I have faith to trust in God, I do. But we also need to be mindful that people are different walks in their faith. Mm -hmm. And also their different levels of health and, and whatever. And so um, I'm not hugging people anymore because it's not, uh, it's not an act because I'm not acting in faith. But it's just wisdom to do that, not knowing where they are and wanting to make sure everyone is healthy. So I wanted to make sure and qualify. We're not saying, hey, we're rocking on faith and, we're, you know, we're going to go jump off a building just to see if we don't splat. That's not the whole, <laughs> that's not the whole thing. The whole thing is being wise. We're not handling snakes here. No, we're not. <laughs> Trusting in God and then just watching to see what he'll do. And there was a, we, we minister to people here and there was a woman that came in the office a couple of days ago. And as she came into the uh, church, she said that her um, engine light came on. And she said, every time anything like that happens, she doesn't have a spouse and, or somebody that could probably work on it, and she would freak out. And this blessed me because she said, as it came on and she started to freak out, she thought she was coming to see me, and she thought, well, what would Lisa, would she freak out? <laughs> and, and then she thought, no, I don't think she would. I think she would just have joy. And I think about what would Jesus do because I don't think Jesus would freak out at anything like that. But what I was saying earlier, she made a choice 
whether she was going to freak out or whether she was going to trust in God. And I suppose I want to re-encourage everyone because when you were praying a while ago for people that have an immune system, not only can you have fear of finances, fear of not providing, but you can also have fear of death. And that's one of the most miserable things. Even as a believer, if you begin fearful, which we have everything to gain in death, however, it might be nice not to go today. <laughs> so if, if you are fearful of the sickness, if you are fearful of the death, again, fear is not for you. And I just wanted to give you instruction a little bit on how to stand up to that. As soon as the thought hits your mind, as soon as somebody says, well, you're just going to die from that, or you're just going to catch that, don't entertain that. The power of life and death is in the tongue. And you're, the enemy is a thief. And so the thief doesn't come in saying, may I take this? He comes in and he grabs it. And so when he's trying to grab your peace with being fearful of death, you just simply say, fear of death, go in the name of Jesus. I am not entertaining Amen. you. And if that thought doesn't leave, get in Psalm 91 and begin quoting that until it leaves. No matter what kind of fear it is, you have to assault it with your voice, put your faith that God, that you trust in him, and then follow that up with the scripture. Amen. That's a good word. In behalf of someone like me, who at one time, my immune system was completely gone, and coming out of isolation, uh, the hug was the most valuable thing I got, though it was risky. And I do not encourage that. <laughs> I needed that hug more than I needed another dose of chemo, personally. <laughs> and uh, don't make light of that. I'm just saying. So maybe, maybe that was a good thing after all. Air hug. Yeah, that's what we're going to. Here at the river, we want you to know that uh, we're very mindful of all the guidelines of the CDC, and, uh, and we understand that we're going to do, do our best. And we're not here to talk about the river today, though. If you want to know about the river, we'll be posting some more things on where we're planning and what's next and, and all of that. But we, uh, I do want to know that we need uh, to say uh, our, our time's just about up. Man, this is the quickest hour I've had lately. And uh, so uh, Rick Curry, a good friend of mine, was talking about uh, the community needs to come together. And you think, come together? We can't, we can't come together. But he told the story, and this is for somebody right now. Maybe you live in a neighborhood where all your neighbors are home and, and they don't want to get out past their yard, and that's a good thing. But somewhere in Italy, some people that had been under the, uh, where they couldn't get out at all, they started raising their windows and started singing house to house. They, the voice and song echoed through those streets where basically up to that moment, pretty much death was in the streets because everybody was fearful. Why don't you put your mind to good use instead of worrying about something you can't control? For example, in Kentucky, uh, there's not been but a couple of deaths, maybe. But the other night in Tennessee, 20-something people in their home, snugly asleep, went into eternity. So to think that we can control every circumstances don't work. But I do want to encourage you to take all precautions you need to take. And, but also, maybe you just need to step out in the front yard and start singing, see if anybody will join you. I love you guys. Where is there anything else you want to say uh, before we jump off of here? No, thank you for letting me pray and talk with you. I appreciate it. And we'll be continuing to pray for our community. That's the facts right there. And, uh, and I also uh, am really feeling strongly about doing more things like this. And, uh, and if you'd like to see us do some more things like that, just comment, let us know. We want to do that. But let me pray for you right now. We want to summarize all of this. I, I do want to say my position uh, in the midst of the criticism. Um, when this nation started, uh, the Puritans came here because the government was telling them how to worship. When the Rev Revolutionary War started, churches were safe havens for people emotionally and spiritually. And you can go through all of the wars, 1820, the World War I, World War II, Vietnam, all the way up to 9-11, people ran to the church. They ran to the church because emotionally, spiritually, 
their needs were greater in their emotional and spiritual realm than there was their physical realm. And like I said, even 9-11, our Congress was singing about God on the steps of our, in our great uh, capital there. My view is not pride. My view is no other reason than I humbly know God called me to preach and called me to love on people Call me to give my dreams and my visions away and embrace his so I can help you and all the people around me. It grieved me very strongly for the first time in American history. In the, in the flu, flu uh, war, so to speak, in 1918, bodies were piled up in hospitals with no, not enough caskets to bury them. But over at the, there was a church not far and it was packed out, service after service. Even though people were afraid of getting the flu, they were crying out to God for help. And so the hospitals are for your physical well-being. Churches used to be for your spiritual well-being. I don't know. We may, may not be having any more. So I don't know. I'm just trying to tell you the heart of this pastor. Not flamboyant, not arrogant. I have nothing to prove. I don't do it for money. If it's for money, I'd have quit this job a long time ago. But it's a calling. And God has called us to be here for people that don't know where to go. We are a lighthouse in a world that's darker than it's ever been. A hopeless world. A generation, the young generation, is struggling with identity. Wouldn't it be amazing if some of us Christians actually prayed instead of worried? And I didn't mean to sound that, sound a little arrogant. I'm backing out of that. Forgive me. But I'm trying to say is all I know, what's the world going to do when the churches shut down? You say, oh, we got social media, we got all that. Yeah, can I help you with something? Jesus didn't send you an email. He came and walked among us to redeem us, to save us. We do social media. We'll continue to do it. We're going to do more right now than we've ever done. But I just want you to know. I want you to know. That's what God asks to do is for me to pastor. I'm going to do it best I can. I know you got an opinion right now, and I know what you're thinking. But I'm saying, I'm going to let you live your life. I'm going to let you choose church, not choose church, watch this to lead us off your friend list. But I got to do what the last thing I heard my father tell me to do. And every pastor in this community is struggling because everybody's against them doing what they're called to do. At the river, we're having planning meetings. We may have a drive-through prayer line. I don't know. We're looking for new ideas. We're, we're, we're praying and seeking God, what the word is for now. But I wish some people out there would believe that God can turn a tragedy into a victory. That God can turn a fear into faith. That God can turn isolation into how much we appreciate the relationships we have with people. You do what you need to do. I support you. I believe in a 100% right for you to do whatever you got to do. But give us space. Give your pastor space to do what he gave up everything in this world that you hold so dear to follow Christ and to pastor sheep. I love you. God bless you. Let me pray for you. Father, I trust you. I trust you. God, I know people that lash out. They're not lashing out at at me or other preachers or whatever. We're all afraid, God. There's all levels, of, there's fear at different levels. Nobody, nobody alive has been in a season in America where the restaurants are closed. And we're on the verge of everyone having to stay home as it is in other states. God, everybody needs you more than they need anything. 
Thank you, Lord, for wisdom. God, I pray if any word I said had an ounce of arrogance or pride, I repent. But I believe you for miracles. Miracles in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you. Let us know. Because God's touched a lot of you. Some of you feel better already. Some of you, your dark fear has just been blowed out by the light of Jesus Christ. Lisa, anything else before we sign off? That's all. Sign off is not the proper term. I'm an old man, y'all. <laughs> We're going to get out of here. Bye. Bye.